In this video, we're going to introduce the concept of inverse trig functions. I started making a video yesterday, and then they interrupt me, interrupted me with the announcements, and um, so I'm not starting at the very beginning, and I'm not posting that video anyway, but I didn't get too far. So I began with the idea of, look and see, oh look, here's y equals x squared. If I find the inverse, then that has both of these arms right here, and it's not a function. But if we say sketch the inverse function, the word function really changes things. And now what we're going to have to do is we're going to have to restrict the domain of the original. So we're going to not do, um, so like if, if, if I say f of x is equal to x squared and I ask for the domain, well, the domain of that is negative infinity to positive infinity. But if I say um, this, say this is, say g of x is equal to the square root of x and I ask for the domain of the inverse, of g, that domain is has been is, has this part of it. Oh, it has a heart bracket at zero. Anyway, if that's confusing, come see me. We'll talk about that. Um, okay, so since they want the inverse function, I have to restrict the domain of the original and then just graph this one side so that this piece is a function. So I can use function notation with it. Um, so then, what we're going to look at next is what happens when I get to a trig function. <coughs> so sorry. Um, I started this, I had my calculator prepared. Oh, okay, so I'm going to come in and I'm going to draw this. I think I set my window yesterday. Oh, I did. Okay, so there's my graph. And one of the things I can do is I can sketch the inverse. And notice that little green piece right here that's coming up. That's the inverse of this function. Um, and you'll notice it's not, the inverse of the blue is the green, but the green is not a function. So when they say sketch the graph, well, I don't really feel like it. You just saw what it looks like, but do it on your own paper. So the thing that makes it a little bit interesting is that the scale is different, like the grids. Um, this is pi, so that's a little bit bigger than 3, 3.14, so you're going to have a point kind of right here. So be aware of that, but I'm going to let you do it by yourself. So what happens is the inverse right here in green is not a function. So we have to restrict the domain of the blue, we have to restrict the domain of, of sine of x so that when I take its inverse, I have a function. And what we have agreed as mathematicians is that we're gonna restrict it so that we get everything that we need. Um, and we want, we want to make sure that we begin at negative 1, we need the point negative 1, we need the point 0, 0, and we need the point positive 1. And I know that there's no reason, and so notice this has concave, this is concave up and this is concave down. Um, really, there's no reason we picked this piece as opposed to that piece would have worked, or this piece. We just, I wasn't there, I should have been there, they should have invited me. All the mathematicians just kind of agree that we would pick that particular piece. So, the, so down here it says the domain of sine of x, so the domain of f of x equals sine of x is, well, that's negative infinity to positive infinity. But we will restrict it to, we want to go from negative pi over 2 to pi over 2 so that the inverse will be a function. Notice that this little piece, this passes a horizontal line test, so now we know that its inverse would pass a vertical line test. Okay, uh, what did I write here? When g of x equals the inverse, we say that, oh, so here's, this is just a notation issue. So you can write it as the inverse of sine of x, or you can say arc sine. So those two, those, those terminologies um, can be used interchangeably. Um, but notice this is, these have to be functions. So what we're going to do is, and the way that I, I like to think through these is I begin, I know what my graph of sine looks like. And I know that I've restricted it to go, so this is the point negative pi over 2, negative 1, this is the point 0, 0, and this is the point pi over 2, 1, and this is concave up, and this is concave down. Okay, so now when I do the inverse, I have to switch my x and my y's. Well, 0, 0 is still 0, 0, but now I have um, negative pi over 2, negative 1, so I've switched that. This becomes a negative 1, negative pi over 2, and this up here becomes a positive, well, I switch these two. This becomes a positive one and a positive pi over two. Um, and then notice, let's see if I can indicate this for you. If I had the line y equals x, and I'm not sure my scale is perfect, but basically what happens is if I reflect this over that line, which is what the inverse does, the concavity changes. Okay, so this is now concave up right here, and this is concave down right there. Okay, continuing on, we now look at cosine. Well, cosine 
cosine begins up here, and then it gets down um, it gets down to, to negative 1. Notice if I just start here, this was 0, 1, and then here is the point pi over 2, 0, and then this down here is the point pi negative 1. That becomes enough of a, this, this goes from positive 1 to negative 1. This, is, this has all of my, um, all of the, it uses all of the range once, okay, if that makes sense. So backing up here. The domain is from negative pi to pi, but if we restrict it from 0 to pi, that's what the mathematicians agreed upon. But if we restrict it to this so that that will be a function. Okay, wait, hang on. The domain is this, but we will restrict it to that so that the, the inverse will be a function. And then we can call that the inverse of cosine, or we can call that arc cosine. So now when I go to graph this, I now have the point, instead of 0, 1, I now have the point 1, 0. So 1, 0 becomes right here. Then I have the point 0, pi over 2. So 0, pi over 2. And then I have the point negative 1, pi. So if this is 1, then here's negative 1 is that same width. If this is pi over 2, here comes pi, this high. So we're something like this. So notice, though, when I change, uh, when I reflect this over the line y equals x, pretend that my scale, once again, may be a little off. But this, if it reflects, it's still going to be um, concave down in this piece. So, so it's going to be concave down here and then concave up there. So this piece has kind of gotten flipped up and over. And this, ladies and gentlemen, is, is the entire graph for arc sine. I lied, arc cosine. And this is the entire graph for arc sine. Um, notice it, it stops and starts. So sine and cosine might be, um, you know, have an infinite domain, but this, this is, it's, it's, it's got a pretty small, it's a small little piece. Okay, tangent, the domain, well, the domain of tangent is everything but the asymptotes. Let's see if I can fit that in here. X such that X is not equal to pi over 2 plus pi k. Okay, so it has, it has infinitely many intervals, but we're going to restrict it to just one interval. And the interval that we want is the one that would include zero, so we're going to restrict it to pi, oh, I lied, a negative pi over 2 and a pi to pi over 2. So notice, I'm using, up here I used hard brackets, down here I used soft brackets because at negative pi over 2, we have an asymptote. And at pi over 2, we have an asymptote, so we can't include those points one way or the other. So if I graph this, then I've got my 0, 0, and I'm approaching an asymptote and approaching an asymptote. So this is a negative pi over 2. This is a positive pi over 2. Um, it might be helpful for us to know that this is, this would be the point pi over 4, comma 1. Okay. So now when I take the inverse, what happens is this was x equals pi over 2, and this was x equals negative pi over 2. So when I switch x and y, this becomes y equals so I now have, instead of vertical asymptotes, I now have horizontal asymptotes. And so I'm still 0, 0, switch them, you're still at 0, 0. Now I have the point, instead of pi over 4, 1, I now have the point 1, pi over 4. And so this is going to start growing like that, and then it starts decaying like this. There's a negative 1, negative pi over 4, but okay, because that's over here, whatever. Okay, and that's what that graph looks like. The, net, the last little part here, it says find all values. This is a review. Okay, so, well, there's the bell. Um, basically, there's a difference between this. This has infinitely many answers, and this just has exactly one answer because the graph only hits it in one place, and that's why your calculator only gives you one answer. And I'm have, I have kids that, have, that are about to come take a test. So goodbye, good luck. Maybe I'll make another video. Bye.